The history of Nepalese art goes back to the 4th century AD. It is called the Likchibi period. Kings from this time ruled in religious tolerance and thus both Hinduism and Buddhism have coexisted beautifully in Nepal. You can see it not only in the practice of social norms but also in the forms of splendid art and architecture. Historically, influences came from India in the south and Tibet in the north through trade and cultural exchange. Nepal's artistic traditions improved and developed even further during the Malla or medieval period. It lasted from 1200 AD to 1769 AD. It is also known as the golden era for Nepalese art. Most of the stupas, monasteries, temples were built during this period. Nepalese culture is as old as our civilization and our art is an important part of our culture. In Nepal we live art. It embodies life cycle from which we draw spiritualism and pragmatic values. Traditional art in Nepal is sacred. There are many deities worshiped by Hindus and Buddhists. Personally, I feel most of the deities are symbolic and metaphorically represent spiritual virtues. Every piece of art connotes moral values, gestures of hands and limbs, and sometimes the pet they carry conveys special feelings and symbolizes different teachings. If one goes deep into the meaning of sacred arts, it becomes so mystical as well as magical. Metal sculpture art is the most ancient and is the most appreciated art in Nepal. Artisans of Kathmandu are among the best in the world for their expertise in the lost wax process of metal casting. The tradition of metal casting in Nepal dates back from the 7th century. The conditions in which people in Nepal work today and their techniques have remained largely unchanged since the ancient times. Most of them still work in a poorly lit and small spaces with inadequate ventilations and yet they create unparalleled masterpieces of workmanship. The secrets of sculpturing work were kept restricted to few families. Knowledge of the skill was passed down generation to generation. And till today, the families of Tamrakars, Sakkyas, Bajajares, Maharjans have kept the legacy alive. Making metal statue is a lengthy process. To create a large piece of metal statue can take up to six months involving several people. The first step is to create a wax model. Here you can see they are making wax model from an original die made of rubber. (laughs) 
after wax models are completely hardened it is coated with semi liquid mixture of fine yellow clay and cow dung then it is kept in the shades for days to dry once the clay covered wax model are completely dried it is coated again this time with several thick layers of mixture of coarse clay and rice husk here you can see how the mixture is being prepared Once the clay covered mold is completely dried it is then heated in a charcoal fire during this process the original wax model is lost and the rough casing remains After 20 to half an hour, mold is then removed from the fire and placed upright so that the molten metal is poured into molds. Once the metal is set, it is put into a container of cold water. After the mold is cool enough the baked clay is broken to reveal the statue inside Then the rough statue goes to the cleaning and engraving specialist Here the surface is cleaned by hand using sandpapers hammers chisels and files electric machines are also used for larger and rougher areas after this the statue is ready for final polishing and finishing The values of these statues cannot be measured in hours or days. It takes intense labor and concentrations of several artisans. So when one asks who is the artist, it is difficult to answer. One who makes an original wax model is as important as the one who does the engraving, cleaning and finishing. <laughs>